Assistant City Manager AJ Hudson couldn't confirm that the keys Perez used to open these meters were the ones issued to him during his employment with the city. He did admit, however, that these keys could not be duplicated and were issued especially by meter manufacturers. Live on scene in Cocoa Beach, Colleen Durney, News 13. News 13 confirmed through the office of the mayor of New York City that the administration is looking to get people out of their shelter program by providing them with free one-way tickets anywhere across the country in order for them to reunite with family members. 30 hopeful entrepreneurs will present their new ideas in a session called Pitch It held here at the Storer Auditorium. Their ideas will consist of new ways to look at our changing media. In order to find leads, investigators look through local papers like this one in the classified ads and also just driving down the roads on signs like these. And another place they look is online, namely Craigslist. Hernandez tells me that the biggest accomplishment was finding out that the city agreed not to demolish the stadium. Now all they're waiting on are the funds to begin the restoration process. Which is why Orange County officials say that the lightning detection systems are so important, especially during the summer months when fields just like the ones right behind me are playing host to a number of sporting events. Thank you all for watching. This has been Colleen Durney with UMTV Spotlight. Through a series of statewide stings and construction site sweeps, the state of Florida is sending a clear message. Unlicensed contracting is illegal. Part of the uh, department's effort is to be proactive in enforcement in trying to keep the playing field level for licensed contractors. Wayne Viger is a licensed contractor who admits he can't compete with the prices unlicensed contractors have to offer. I'm glad to see DPR will be out there trying to get these people. Doing that, it's an unfair thing to the contractors that are out there that are still trying to fight the battle and stay alive in these kinds of times. Over the past year, the state held 39 sweeps, resulting in 27 citations, and two stings, resulting in 10 arrests. Officials admit the increase is due to many professionals being laid off. I don't begrudge anyone to go out and make a living, but they need to play by the rules, and they need to do it the way it should be done. The fines have caught up to $5,000 per incident. The first offense is just a first-degree misdemeanor, but a second offense is a third-degree felony. In order to find leads, investigators look through local papers like this one in the classified ads and also just driving down the roads on signs like these. And another place they look is online, namely Craigslist. In a sweep, inspectors go out to construction sites to check for licenses and proof of insurance. During a sting, inspectors and undercover officers pose as homeowners to catch the contractors in the act. The state of Florida warns hiring an unlicensed contractor could result in more than just shoddy workmanship. If a worker gets hurt on your property or property is damaged, you could be the one who is liable. And if the work is not completed, kiss your money goodbye. If the bid price seems too good to be true, there's probably a reason for that. In Orlando, Colleen Durney, News 13. In the last three years, the number of text messages transmitted has increased 11-fold to over 110 billion text messages per month. And one of the newer places to text? Cars. Combining driving and texting is not a good mix, according to UM police officer George Boxali. See them texting, and there's no way that that person that's involved in that activity can drive as safely as someone that's not involved in that activity. UM Department of Psychology Chair Dr. Rod Wellens attributes this constant need for texting to our changing society. We're kind of taught that everybody has to multitask. Well, I do it all the time because uh, I'm always in contact with my job with, uh, you know, like emails and whatnot, uh, updates, whatever. So uh, it's kind of like become a way of life for me. When it comes to driving, <laughs> we may be overconfident that we can foresee the future and nothing's going to happen and we can look away for a minute to get that call. So far, 18 out of the 50 states have made texting while driving illegal. And Florida is not on this list, but that's not to say they're not trying to make their way to number 19. Just last month, the city of Miami made it illegal to text while driving in school zones. And while UM isn't exactly a school zone, some would like to see action taken because of statistics like these. When you're texting, your reaction time deteriorates by 35%. So that's more than a third. 
Now, if you, people that are uh, intoxicated, their reaction time is only 12% slower. I'm not a fan of texting and driving because it scares me when people come around the campus parking lots real fast and they're uh, looking at their phones instead of paying attention to uh, pedestrians. For UMTV, I'm Colleen Durney. The Miami Marine Stadium was designed in 1963 by Cuban architect Hilario Candela. Most open, public, natural, beautiful park that could be dreamed of right in that location. First, home to powerboat races, then later a performance venue, the stadium grew to be a symbol of Miami. The city condemned the stadium after Hurricane Andrew hit Miami in 1992. Later, George Hernandez, a professor in the School of Architecture, received news of the city's new plans for the stadium. When the uh, Edward Durrell Stone plan for Virginia Beach first came out, the plan was that the stadium would no longer be there. Partnering with some of his students, Hernandez decided to hold a studio last spring geared toward the restoration of the stadium. We really used the brain power of the university and the energy of the university to champion this cause, and it has been quite a ride. With the help of architect Candela, students came up with ways to preserve the original quality of the stadium. Graduate student Robert Douglas was one of the members of the studio. We really actually accomplished something in the studio, like we're actually like we actually can make a difference, even just as a group of students. The stadium was not the only property in danger of demolition. The city also had alternate plans for the man-made basin which surrounds the stadium. But several groups like the Friends of Miami Marine Stadium, of which Candela and Hernandez are co-founders, pushed the students' suggestions until the city finally accepted some of them. The original master plan had shown a lot of boat slips and uh, storage for boats in the basin itself and we moved that out of the basin so that the basin could continue to be sort of unencumbered space. Which allows the basin to be used for what its intended use was. Sporting event, uh, recreational activities, performances. It is a multi-use water room. The studio's success was further realized when the Marine Stadium was added to the World Monument 100 list. Hernandez tells me that the biggest accomplishment was finding out that the city agreed not to demolish the stadium. Now all they're waiting on are the funds to begin the restoration process. So it won't be a quick fix. It might take a couple more years, three years, but our hope is that sometime down the line we'll all be listening to Jimmy Buffett play the stadium again. Reporting for UMTV, I'm Colleen Durney.